we um, focus on our blended classrooms and flipped classrooms. We also um, talk about project-based learning and um, all the different Google apps and iPad apps that are out there to help students with special needs and how they can kind of help to level that playing field for those students. I teach fifth grade reading three times a day and then we have some different intervention times in between the different hours of the day. And then after school I teach Lego robotics and there's two different levels on that. We do one, which is second and third grade, which is very basic builds, but they're then plugging them into the computers that um, they'll program the builds to do um, different activities. Like for example, there's a monkey that they build and then they have program the monkey to drum and then they get to, and then we always bring in extra little challenges of like, can you make that monkey drum to a different beat? Or can you make him move his hands at the same time? And things like that. So that definitely changes the engineering of how they made the monkey, as well as the programming in the computer and the timing of what they do. In the afternoons, after school, I stay here for about two hours and that's what we work on. They come in because they think it's fun. I get to build Legos and lots of times they don't even realize how much they're actually learning when they're in there. So of course they're learning the, the science and the technology of the programming, lots of physics with gears and motors and sensors, things like that. But I think more importantly, they're learning, they have to work in groups, they have partners. So they have to learn how to work together as a team. Um, they also have to learn the perseverance. You know, in the beginning of the class, when they first come, every time there's a problem that's not quite working right, they're shooting their hand up and saying, Miss Mary, Miss Mary, come help me. And, but by the end, it's like I'm not even needed. They, you know, I'll come over and I'll give them a little hint and I'll, I'll suggest something and I'll encourage them and walk away and they've got to persevere through it and they've got to go back in their steps and find where they messed up and try something different and, and to try to get that to work. So when I bring in something new, like the excitement and the joy that they take from, from using the technology and bringing in like project-based learning, like that's huge. All of a sudden your discipline problems disappear because they're excited about what they're doing and they don't even realize they're, they're learning at that point because they're just so excited on what they're doing. I had a student when I had first had the one-to-one -one iPads in my classroom and I was, began flipping my lessons. And this student was one that always struggled, had always had special needs and would not ask for help when they were struggling. They would just kind of sit there and struggle in silence. And as soon as I started to flip my lessons, um, so I'd video record them, and the students would come in and they would watch the video, but throughout it they'd have to pause and do different things and it would move them through the lesson. And as soon as I started doing that, it freed me up to go key in on that student. And we also did what's called, what my class called an open schedule, which is where they would come in and I would have the schedule for the day of what they needed to complete during the day and they got to pick the when and the where of how they completed those different tasks. And so that really allowed me to key in on those high need students while also knowing that everyone else was taken care of and everyone else was getting what they needed and even more for some of those students. But to key in on those struggling students and be able to help them and I could really see that them start to grow and by the end he wasn't afraid to raise his hand. And our job as professionals, as teachers, is to get these little students prepared for in 10 years from now, can they join the market? Place? Can they get out there and find that job? And we don't even know what those jobs are going to look like. Those jobs, we can't even imagine what they're going to be, but we know that there's going to be technology, there's going to be engineering, they're going to have to work in groups, they're going to have to be able to problem solve. All of those are going to be necessary skills, and I think that STEM is a great way to teach those skills. Definitely honored. I know that, I mean, I work hard for all of these things, and I love to teach the Legos, I love to teach the pre service teachers, I love to do all of this, but I do it for them. I don't, you know, do it because I need an honor or anything like that. I do it because the kids love it, and I do it because the teachers ask me to, to teach them the sort of things. So what we've titled it is Systematic. So we have the word STEM in the middle of it. And this year's challenge is the Aquatic Challenge. Um, we're going to continue, hopefully, each summer to have a different challenge and continue to grow the Systematic program. Basically, we'll have groups from six to eight kids in a group, and we have, I think, about 50 students signed up right now to do it, and they're from ages um, incoming fifth graders to incoming eighth graders, so a good age range. Some of them have, like, Lego robotic experience. Some of these kids have never done anything with engineering or anything with STEM at all. So it'll be a mixtures of our teams are multi-age level, multi-experience level. So um, each team will be presented with the challenge of designing um, an aquatic center to add on to our current YMCA, which is a project that is actually about to happen here at Sheridan. 
and the kids are pretty excited about it. Throughout the week they'll have different challenges. Some science challenges include they'll be learning about pumps and water pressure. Um, they'll be learning about the speed of water and the force that it creates. I think one of the activities that we have planned is they're going to build a water slide from the second or third story window of the junior high and they're going to build it and send a little Lego man down and, and time him and see how long it'll take and so they'll be working with that. As far as technology, they're going to be building robots and these robots are going to have to build and program to clean the bottom of their pool. So once they decide the shape, it'll depend on their shape of their pool and they'll have to program it to go and vacuum out the, the stuff that is settled in the pool. For engineering, they're going to be designing their own water feature. So whether they want to create a cool, um, like they have those bowl water features or a cool twisty slide or um, a dump bucket or anything like that and they'll be designing a miniature 3D model of it to make it work. They'll also be designing their own um, logo and name for the aquatic center which they'll use. Um, we have an engraver and a 3D printer to create different products to help advertise their um, design. Um, we bring in a lot of community members. Um, there'll be community members to come introduce the project so that it's not just us teachers saying, but it's um, real life for these kids to, to make it real is I think very important. And then they'll be coming throughout the week to help us do different things. We'll be taking a field trip to the Kendrick Pool and at the Kendrick Pool we'll get to go see how their pumps and timers and everything works to make their pool work. They have a slide and they've got um, a t dump bucket that's on a timer. so. Um, and some different squirting things. So that'll be awesome for the kids to get to see how the real pool works. And um, throughout the camp, while they're working on all these different design features, we'll have different STEM challenges, the collaboration between all of us eight teachers working together and really bringing our different expertise is what makes this camp really powerful. We require a lot of our students, just like um, all the other schools in Wyoming. Um, we have great teachers who build relationships with our kids. And so that really allows them to trust in our teachers. Um, our kids take a lot of risk in their learning um, and therefore uh, we get a lot out of our kids. Um, and that's a testament both to our teaching staff, um, our paraprofessional staff, and, and our students for sure. Um, everybody kind of rises to the occasion and, and does what needs to be done. Abby's a great teacher. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's in our after school program or um, within the framework of what we do within our PLC meetings um, or, and most importantly, the impact that she has um, on students. We talk a lot about um, teachers have six times the impact um, in determining student success uh, as compared to all other variables combined. Um, and Abby is certainly a testament to that. She is self-reflective. Abby has that unique quality um, and unique ability to build really great relationships with kids, but at the same time hold them very much accountable for um, rigorous expectations. And, and with that comes a lot of high level of support from Abby as well. I think they really get out of this experience that critical thinking piece that we all know is so important to learning. They come up with solutions. The ability to take those risks and, not, and know that there's not one right answer um, to explain their thinking. That's one of the neat things about this is it's never just about a right answer. Um, it's more about that process of, of arriving at a solution and then explaining how you did so. And I see our kids coming out of this experience with that. And so I think what college and career readiness is really looking for is again critical thinkers, solution-oriented kids, kids who challenge the everyday thinking. And that's what's fostered in our STEM program. Specifically Abby is fostering this ability to think outside the box. And that is what the workforce needs and that's what the workforce wants, to challenge new ideas, to make their companies and businesses better. Um, and, and if you ask any of the, the college personnel, obviously that's what they're after. Um, they're after kids who can think um, critically, problem solve. She's extremely innovative. Um, she already is a leader on our campus when it comes to all of those things. And certainly, I think the sky is the limit to what we can use um, her knowledge to build our after school program and get kids even um, more excited and more in tune with that technology piece and that engineering piece and those science pieces that are going to be so valuable in their learning experience as they go forward, but also preparing them for the college and career readiness piece. Abby certainly is a great representative not only of Sagebrush but of Wyoming um, and what tremendous 
educational experiences our kids have access to. Um, Sheridan County School District number two allows us to do those things. Dr. Saxe getting us the 21st Century Grant allows us to do the things that you know she does, which allows you, you know, to come here and experience and and have a look into, you know, her mind and see um, how it all works out um, in the end for our kids. Mm -hmm.